Now, here's what I learned on boot camp, guys. One of the freakiest things that I learned on boot camp. All right? And we're going to end off on this. And I'm going to leave you with this as we go into tomorrow, as we go deeper down the rabbit hole. So one of the things that I learned on boot camp... Okay, so I'm going to kind of whine and bitch a little bit, but then I'm going to show you how rather than bitching about it, I proactively fixed it and how the educational lesson that you guys are going to learn. So when I first started running boot camps back in 2002, sometimes I would have a guy that I was working with and I would do like incredible demonstrations, like, I, like the stuff that I would show him would be amazing. And he himself would do amazing. But at the end of the night, he would be bitching that he didn't see enough demonstration and that he himself sucked and he didn't learn anything. So I would get that back then. And I would go home raging because anyone who's taken a program with me knows I put my heart and soul into those programs. So the thing is like, I thought, why? What is going on here? But eventually, I began to notice commonalities. I began to see and actually be able to predict how successful somebody would be within 30 seconds of meeting them. How successful that they would be on a boot camp. But I have ways of changing this, by the way. As a teacher, I have ways that I change this so that everybody will be successful. Now, essentially, say that you have a low concept of yourself. Have you guys ever heard the expression, um, what you think of other people is a reflection of what you think of yourself? You guys ever heard that one, right? Like, usually the guys that are the most judgmental and spiteful are oftentimes just reflecting their own self-hate. All right? Well, look, this goes even deeper. Say that you have a concept of yourself as being a chode. What we have here is called the success barrier. Well, look, what's going to happen? Say that he has it right in front of his face, specifically how to get girls. Well, guess what? Now he would have the knowledge, right? He would know how to do it. And beyond that, what if that guy... <laughs> okay? What if that guy, not only that, um, had done amazing approaches, all right? What if he had done amazing things that night? And he would have to realize, look how great that I did. Let's, let's give some numbers here. Let's say that you do 10 approaches, right? Mm -hmm. And seven of them are great. Yep. Hell, let's say four of them are great, okay? If you're a new guy and you got four girls who you've never met in your entire life to actually be into you and connect with you or, or be attracted to you, that's pretty cool. Because your buddy who's sitting at home playing World of Warcraft, the only thing he got attracted was the orc princess. You know, right? That's it. And I know guys that actually have World of Warcraft and EverQuest girlfriends, all right? So look, okay? That are probably fucking fat dudes playing on the other end. So, right? Okay? Mindy or whatever, right? <laughs> okay? Um, all right, so basically, a guy who's really positive, right? Like a guy who believes that he can be successful, if he believes it, He'll go out, and even if he does two good approaches, you know what he's going to remember? The two, good the, two good the two good ones, right? And say that he saw some good stuff, he's like, you know, I, I think I saw how to do it. And I did these two good ones, and, you know, I had some, you know, I had some rough landings, but if I could just, you know, focus on those two good ones, I could get where I want to go, right? Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, you'll have a guy that might have done nine amazing approaches, but he had the one bad one, and if he has a success barrier, what's he going to focus on every time? Yeah, all right, reticular activation system, that's exactly it. He's going to focus on that one bad one, all right? This is such a predictor of success, it's ridiculous. It is a tremendous predictor of success. As a teacher, by the way, one of the things that I always do when I'm teaching is I always focus on the positive. Like if I'm teaching a boot camp, I'll be like walking by the pillar where the good approach took place and go, hey, that's where you, you did really well with that girl, great job, right? And I'll keep repeating over and over, do you remember when you did this? It was great. Hey, repeat back, to, or like every approach that a guy does when he comes out, I'll say, tell me something good about that approach. And I'll continually hammer in that positivity. Likewise, um, I'm, I'm talking about my teaching here just to teach you guys how to teach yourselves, okay? Um, just sort of some insights that I learned. Um, when a guy comes out of a bad approach, you want to know what I used to do? I would give negative feedback. I would give the criticism. So he'd get blown out, and I'd say... Oh, oh, dude, you did this wrong, you did this wrong, you did this wrong. Doesn't that make sense on the surface? Yeah. Right? Makes sense on the surface, right? Mm -hmm. He went wrong, give him the feedback. It may, that, that's, that's what the program is. Right. That's what it's supposed to be. But the problem is, that was, that's going to get you further and further into your head. Yeah, you kill the state. Yeah, kill, and kills the state, Beta right? How to win. What's that? The article, How to Wing, where you're talking about when you criticize your wing. Yeah, you yeah. When you, you know, that's what, what he's talking about, which is 
really great feedback, actually, um, is basically I wrote an article about how to be a wingman. And essentially, I was saying, if your wingman gets blown out, the last thing you want to do is go, hey, bro, you did this wrong, and you did this wrong. By the way, why do you guys sometimes do that to each other? And it's not on purpose. There's no bad intention. But why do you guys do that to each other? They want each other to go up. Well, yeah, that's the good intention. But from a state perspective, why do they start bossing them around? What are they trying to get for their state? state. Puts them in state, right? Puts them in state. You guys ever had someone do that to you before? And honestly, have you guys ever done that to someone before? Yeah. Yeah, you know? Yeah, me too, right? So that's like the first several years of me doing this stuff. So basically, what I've learned is that when I teach a boot camp, I actually view learning as like a funnel that dilates, right? So like the more in state that I can bring my group in a boot camp, and by the way, I can highly recommend every person here to take a boot camp, okay? Because these are the lowest ratio, most high quality programs on the planet that you'll ever find. And I am a Nazi when it comes to quality control, right? I basically give most instructors nervous breakdowns about quality control, all right? Most of them have nightmares and stuff. Me going, fucking produce transformation, get the fuck out of here, all right? That's the, the culture around RSD. Now look, you're teaching the program. And if he's out of state, say that I'm teaching you're out of state, this is like the funnel. So I can only pour in a little bit of information. So before I'm even gonna give feedback, I wanna create state get you in state, and I'm trying to expand that funnel. Once I've got the state raging, then I can say, oh, by the way, earlier on you did that, and you can improve it like this. And the funnel's there, and the learning can begin. But I'm always moderating that as a teacher in real time, okay? Real time teaching. So now, what does this mean for yourself in terms of what you focus on? Most guys go out, and like I said, they can't be successful because you get that negative approach, what happens? You focus on it. Have you ever maybe written an article on a forum and like 20 people said it was great and one person like flamed you and then that one bothers you the most? Yeah. And that's the one. You don't give thanks to all the people that gave you props, but you start responding to that guy. Right. Yeah, maybe I did that a couple times in the early years, right? <laughs> okay, <laughs> you read my old archives, right? So basically, that's what most people do though, is they're continually focusing on that one negative one, forgetting about all the positive ones they have. Well, how's, what's the solution then? Open your mind up. Allow yourself to focus on the positive. There's been Has anyone here ever read my article called The 25 Points? Yes. Yes. Okay, did you guys like it? Yes. Thank you. Well, you know what's interesting? As awesome as it is, and I, and I love the article, I actually don't use it for teaching purposes anymore live because it's negative. Yeah. That's right. I was actually thinking about that a little bit. Mm, awesome, awesome. Because what happens is like, I wrote this article called The 25 Points, and what it was was like the 25 most common mistakes that I had ever seen on a, on a boot camp. If you, you can go to uh, RSD, www.rsdnation.com or www.rsdwiki.com. We actually have a, a, a full wiki de, de, uh, dedicated to RSD. So basically, you can find those articles. And the 25 points, as great as, as, great as it was, and I was very happy with it because it really nailed out a lot of the errors that people made, it puts them in their head. It gets them focusing on the negative. Well, there was a study done. Where they were, t and my friend Igor told me about this, who's actually into like, um, you know, mind type stuff and hypnotherapy. His name's Igor Lidachowski, he's a good buddy of mine. So what he was saying, and I don't know, I don't know if it's true, and I don't care if it's true, if I remembered it properly. Here's just, here was the story, it was something like this. Apparently they were training people how to shoot a gun. And so the FBI would train people how to shoot the gun, and they'd say, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, and don't do this. What they did was an experiment, and again, I don't know if this is true, was they took an old lady and they said, look, here's like the three most important things that you have to do, like the positive things, like what to do, not what not to do, okay? And they taught her that and apparently she learned how to become like a crack shot in like 10 times faster or something than, uh, than all these FBI guys. Has anyone heard of that story before? Tony Robbins. It makes sense study. though. Tony, Tony Robbins did a study with a bunch of, uh, I think it was army guys yeah. that he was teaching how to Pistol shoot. Training. Yeah. Pistol training. And what he did is, they had those don't, 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 don't. Yeah. They just reframed them in the positive. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because your mind doesn't accept negative okay. programming. Yeah. So if I tell you, like, like don't think of a pink elephant. Uh -huh. You just thought of a pink elephant. Yeah. Right. So you're like, don't talk too fast. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Like, instead of saying talk slowly, be uh -huh. comfortable, you know. Yeah, it exactly. makes sense. You can latch yeah. onto it, right? Like, do this and you can, like, you can constantly uh -huh. see it. And you're like, am I doing it? Yeah, do it. L imagine this. Remember the road in Maui that I was talking about? Yeah. Exactly. Imagine you're driving that road and, you're, and the guy in the, in the passenger seat is going, don't drive off the cliff, bro. Right. Dude, don't drive off that cliff, bro. Exactly. <laughs> we do not want to fall off that cliff.
Isn't that what he's yeah. saying on Time of Your Life? No, because I know you've seen it. Like what you're I mean, that's on. a long program, probably. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What Tony Robbins, yeah, in Time of Your Life, he says, yeah, he says it's like you're driving a race car, and if you spin out, right, if you look at your instinct is, where's the wall? Where's the wall? Right? And you keep looking at it, and then you'll drive into the wall. Instead, you've got to look at where you want to go. Okay? But anyway, coming back to the idea of success barriers, okay, and let's say folks on success barriers here, again, people will remember the approaches that matches their existing reality. Do you remember how we said reordering perception to preserve the map? Well, what people will do, if, if your map of reality is, I'm a chode, what are you most likely to remember on your program? Bad approaches. Or you're on your night, rather. Bad. The bad approaches that you did, right? If you're a guy who has an empowering self-concept, remember we talked about identity yesterday? Yeah, sure. If you have that empowering self-concept, you have that high on the totem pole, belief about yourself, you're going to focus on the positive. And what happens then, you ever learn how to play basketball and maybe like, you know, in your mind, even when you're like at home, you're imagining dribbling, like, you know, you're imagining taking shots. You guys ever done that? Sure. Maybe with hockey, like you imagine that kind of like as you're daydreaming. Well, when you're going through the motions properly, your mind is feeling those motions right? Like what a nice, smooth approach looks like. And so essentially, when you're focusing on the positive, you become so focused in that and immersed in that and not thinking about all this negative nonsense that eventually you blow up. You blow up and you get the skills that you want. I guess the thought that I would leave you with is this. We've had a very long, interesting day today and we've gone deeper down, down into the rabbit hole, all right? And maybe we're like 75% of the way down because tomorrow we're going even deeper, all right? And all of the knowledge that we've built up to this point is building towards tomorrow. So we talked today about what your reality is and how your reality draws other people in. And we talked about how your reality can also hold you back or empower you. The message that I want to leave you with today, ultimately, is to see the best in yourself and to see the best in other people, all right? So when you go out tonight, and I like to leave a sort of an idea to go out with every night, I want you to see the best in yourself and cut yourself a ton of slack, and I also want you to see the best in other people. Because when you see the best in other people, you assume that other people are seeing the best in you. That becomes a part of your reality. And I really think that in this world, if more people thought like that, the world would be a much better place to live in. That's the end of day three. Thank you guys very much. <laughs>